Tonight on Channel One, I'm going to be grouting with pop star Skinny. And I'm going to be showing Arthur and Katie from the Sunny Happy Playhouse team how to tell their bits. Your children are our future. Advance knows this, and we're making sure we get to them while they're young. The Advance Go-Getters initiative will put your children in the picture. With subtle brainwashing delivered in potentially hazardous environments. And when they talk about what's happening at home, we'll be listening and taking notes. You wouldn't let your children drift off down the river to uncertain ends or abandon them to a life of shame and mockery and eventual death on the streets. So you sent them to fly with us instead. They're probably safe, but I guess you never know what's lurking in the water. The advanced go-getters. We can't believe you fell for it. Before we go over to the National Nightly News team, there's just time to catch up on our programming later tonight. At 6.30pm, it's What's My Old Tat Worth? And tonight, Frank Franklin and the team are in Granstable trying to flog an Ottoman. At 7pm, it's today's highlights from the Sports Board Regionals, presented, as always, by Patrick Bannon. That's followed at 7.30pm by The Club, our harrowing soap opera about a group of poor young unfortunates who find themselves excluded from the Go-Getters programme and their inevitable demise. At 8pm, it's movie time, with the network premiere of smash hit Bullet Man 2. And after that, at 20 past 10, Dr Adrian Atkinson Blimey returns with a new season of Incisors, and his very first guest is popular parrot Hamilton Scorkbox. At 11.30, it's a double bill for popular transatlantic comedy That Nun's Got Guns. Before at 12.30, we reach the National Weather Report with Sally Peng to close out this evening's entertainment. But first, it's time to hand over to Jeremy, Megan and all the team at the National Nightly News. Good evening, I'm Megan Wolf, And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. The establishment strikes back. The World Council has agreed today to impose punitive sanctions on the people of this country. The sanctions, which are broad ranging, include restrictions on the supply of oil and gas, food, clothing, and even some medicines. But how should we react? We ask the public. What are your reaction to the sanctions? What the f is My mind needs insulin. Am I supposed to get a transition? What's the government doing about it, eh? Ah. Uh. Thanks, Patrick. Important stuff. Controversial Prime Minister Julia Salisbury attempted to assuage growing public concerns with the following official statement released earlier today. The international sanctions declared against this country today by the World Council remind us that now, more than ever, we need to come together as a team. Since coming to power, we have eradicated poverty and, as a consequence, seen crime fall to levels previously thought impossible. Our schools, hospitals and youth clubs are thriving and our transition centres have enabled many thousands to unburden their loved ones with dignity. In any sane world, we would be held up as a model to emulate. Evidently, this is not that world. The privileged few have lobbied, and now they are striking back. But we will not cower before their tantrums. 
And we encourage other progressive nations of the world to continue to trade, visit, and share their cultures with ours. Do not be afraid. We have more friends than we can count. We are a team, now more than ever. And this team is on your side. Thank you. Reassuring stuff. But what do you, the public, think of our refreshingly different government? Robin Short found out. I was wondering if you could tell me what you think of the government. What? That share of irrid- Punishing success and rewarding laziness? They're taking this country down the bloody swanny. And it's not just me that thinks so. My wife Iris, she agrees. Putting the grown-ups to shame. An award today for Camp Busy Fingers, which continues to break all production expectations. A slightly dazed-looking Sophia Remington presented young foreman Alfie Plank and his team with a certificate, statuette, and a moderately generous talk shop voucher. So, how do the public feel about the Youth Employment Opportunity Scheme? Patrick Bannon again. What's your opinion of Camp Busy Fingers? What do you think my opinion is? Should we ban? Bloody child labour. Is that what you like, is it? No, I don't, I don't, don't hurt me, I don't. Pipers at the gates of dawn. Commuters in the capital this morning found themselves surprised and amused by the latest stunt from popular pressure group Disrupt. Silent protests were held outside underground stations throughout the capital, bringing a pleasantly surreal quality to the morning commute. Unless, like me, you have a phobia of mimes. But how do we, as a country, really feel about Disrupt? Robin? How do you feel about Disrupt? Oh, well, now you're talking. Ruddy hero, showing us not to take it lying down like Iris here. <laughs> <laughs> so you both feel there are calls worth supporting? Oh, well, Iris doesn't speak on mine, but we're pretty sure there's still one in there, aren't we, love? <laughs> uh, wherever it is, it loves Disrupt, fighting the oinks for our freedom. And what could possibly be wrong with that? Do you need me to get you some help? <laughs> Feast or famine, resourceful doctors David Wong and Ingrid Sforsborg and Horgensford today announced their first successful harvest in Dante's Taint. Although they can currently only grow a few fungal strains, the scientists seem to be staying positive as the following picture shows. The undauntable scientists chose to try and survive in the cave system while the complex rescue operation inches forward up here on dry land. Let's hope they like strong enough. But with Advance planning to spend an eye-watering amount of public money on the rescue craft, we asked Patrick Bannon to find out what we should all be thinking about the accelerating costs. <coughs> yeah, don't worry, they're going to cut all this, aren't they? It's disgusting. Have you, Christ, have you thought about quitting smoking? I'm fine now. Okay. What were we talking about? The trapped scientists. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Brilliant. I am not a number. Applications finally open today for the new advanced team membership cards, a scheme by the government to allow fast access to all the new public services being introduced daily. The team membership cards are entirely voluntary, but will be recognised as legal identification by all major organisations, including the police, banks and, vitally, pubs and bars. And of course, there's no charge, Jeremy. It all seems too good to be true. Well, you've always been a cynic. But most importantly, what should you, the public, think about the new team membership cards? Team membership cards? Absolutely bloody not. It's the thin end of the wedge, isn't it, Iris? Well, I... First it's, can I see your identification, sir? And then it's, would you mind bending over the table, sir? So sergeant state educated and constable regional accent here can stick their truncheon up your berry hair! Oh, crikey! They should call well, them think... what they are! They're bloody ID cards! Well, oh, for I... Christ's sake, what is it, Iris? Oh, be out or not! I'm so sorry. Crikey! And finally tonight, back of the net, popular sports personality Johnny Hounsleeves and his fiancée Tiffany Lamour was spotted out today doing a little shopping for what many are already calling the greatest wedding ever. We can only assume that Tiffany's latest show, My Teenage Secretions, has sold better than expected, as by the looks of things, the whole affair is about to become more expensive than Lil C's shoe collection. I don't know who that is. But what should your opinion be of this extravagant display of wealth? 
Your thoughts there. Later tonight, in a break from our usual responsibilities, Jeremy will be taking popular rapper Jay Zuss to task over his street credibility. And then we'll both be meeting the team behind the new play that's got theatre critics buzzing with anticipation. That's all coming up on tonight's National, National Nightly, Nightly News. Nightly News. Nightly News. Are we talking about? You don't want to know. My sweat glands, apparently. Like I said, going in. First tonight, let's return to our main story. With the shine coming off advances popularity. And the honeymoon period pretty much over. The National Nightly News has spared no expense in bringing you the response to today's sanctions from across the continent. Joining us to help digest this shocking development are Prime Minister Peter Clement from his home in Lanfordshire. Good evening, Jeremy. And from Urkestan Foreign Minister Ivan Vodovic. It's great pleasure. Uh, Miss Wolf, you like... And from Svenland, Minister of Mojo, Beer. Hey, everybody. Minister Vodovic, your country pushed especially hard for these sanctions. Any regrets? My only regret is I was not able to see the face of my old friend Peter Clements when the results of the vote were announced. <laughs> As you say, he has one up in your bottoms. In Svenland, we try not to gloat, actually, because it's seen as really ugly and dangerous to some small creatures, yeah? Oh, don't worry, Minister. Ivan and I go way back. He's a wind-up merchant who... Right. Peter. He's just trying to get a rise out of me. You're like a man who loads dissidents onto train to labor camp, not because of love of country, but to make up for the size of his tiny penis. Been on the vodka, Ivan. <laughs> no more than you. I see you on election night with mouth like man thinks he's singing beautiful lullaby, but actually he's squealing like a pig in hands of Randy Big Dick Farmer. Hey, <laughs> actually, we Swinlandians. We aren't size obsessed. We value passion, yeah? Like the way we spoke up for Mr. Clement's country at the World Council. That's all well and good. And high and mighty, but where were you for the actual vote then? A finger in each other's fjords. Actually, that's kind of racist. And if you must know, I've had like a really tiring afternoon and my tongue is very thoughtful. Prime Minister, with advances popularity on the wane... You don't uh, have to bring that up at every given opportunity, you know. <laughs> Peter is like man who thinks he's sniffing flowers in beautiful glade. But he's actually standing a low pie from tree at shit flushing time on day of festival of shit. <laughs> I tell him this at 19th hole. <laughs> Minister Vodovich believes that left to their own devices, people will behave selfishly. Uh, it's nature of all beasts. However... In this country, we think our citizens are capable of being more than beasts. Uh, pathetic idealism. Uh, Minister Björk, Svenland has long had radically different traditions and culture from the rest of the world, and yet it peacefully coexists. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, I think maybe the world sees us as something they can actually spiritually be enlightened to, yeah? Yeah, or maybe it's the orgy houses. Sometimes, when foreign dignitaries come to visit us, they're actually quite sceptical, actually, actually. So we take them on a visit to the Donga, 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 Donga district and show them what, like, a progressive, enlightened society looks like. Uh, shit of bull. Spend them with, like, woman who thinks she make best cake in village hot baking contest. And then when she slices it open, full this and come. Uh, uh, I, that's, well... That's just really gross, actually. <laughs> Svenland is a teeny tiny country with population smaller than number of people. Peter Clements is sex with his teeny tiny penis. It's not all about size, actually. Yes, that's what Peter Clements always claim. I'm talking about population size. And I'm talking about Peter Clements. Oh, fuck off, Ivan! Oh, Prime Minister, please. Oh, it's so easy to sit on your pile of money and gloat, in it? You're a shy. A fucking god awful golfer, and quite frankly, as my old man used to say, you a cunt. Prime Minister, please. You who is cunt? Minister Vodovich, please. You a fucking starving pal. We will see how well fed your people are when the sanctions start to bite. Uh, 
You think your man like big scary wolf person, terrorizing village, when actually a pathetic goose person searching puddle for tiny dropped off penis. Why are you so obsessed about all cocks, mate? In Finland, we believe like the size of your penis isn't as important as the love of Oh, fuck, fuck off, off yeah. yeah. Okay, if everybody could just calm down. You're so smug on golf course. Like man who fuck pig and somehow I give her birth to beautiful lady girl. <laughs> but now you start to see, eh? Yeah, sir? The people never happy. It never enough. It's certainly true that advances popularity. <laughs> Fucking win, yeah! <laughs> this bollocks again, shall we? Actually, you know. Oh, nah, fuck this. I'm done with this. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, please don't storm out. No, no. I have had enough of you, Mr. Jeremy Donaldson, and yes, snide aside. Do you think you could make a better job of things, do you? <laughs> Not that fucking easy, let me tell you. <laughs> is a fucking disgrace. You insinuate and edit against us and pick your headlines so people don't trust us. The sooner you roaring monsters are taken into public ownership, the happier everyone in this country will be. Well, um, we've not got long until the adverts, so... Um... I'm, 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 I'm sorry for the outburst, Miss Wolf. Julia thinks very highly of you, and I know you're not the one making the editorial decisions. Do any of you have anything you wish to add about the sanctions? My work here is done. <laughs> I like man who happy he lie down with fatty, drunk, easy girl from Village Inn, who discover in morning he wake up next to beautiful news reporter lady. You know, I think it would be a terrible shame here if the people of your country were to suffer because of teenage grudges and personal rivalries, yeah. Thank you. Prime Minister? This country, this wonderful, civilised, creative, inventive country, we're not scared of these sanctions. There's no wolves at our door, only the best of people striving to help out. So no, Ivan, we're not afraid. In fact, I doubt we'll lose a wink of sleep because we're strong and we're well resourced and we don't back down to bullies. And on that note, we have to wrap up. Ministers, Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. We'll be back after these messages. Hi, I'm Sophia Remington, and I'm extremely unmarried. But that doesn't mean I don't care about families. We all know children are important for our retirement. But let's face it, sometimes the little monsters can be a bit of a handful. But don't trust me, I haven't spawned. Let's listen in on a couple of genuine real parents. Janet, I'm... Wait. What happened to you? It's the children, Brad. I'd never say this in public, but sometimes I just want to kick their little faces in. Every night, I dream of choking the last tiny breath out of little Frankie. But when I wake up, he's still here. There, there has, has to, to be, be a better, better way. way. And now there is. Now there is a fun place where you can send your children for a vacation, and we'll even pay you for the privilege. This looks complicated, doesn't it? I thought only a master tailor would be able to make one of these. But it turns out even a stupid child can do it. And with tap busy fingers, they do. Every day. I'm Sophia Remington, and although I'll never be stupid enough to breed, I'll always offer hope to those who do. Welcome back, I'm Megan Wolfe. Later, we have an exclusive first look at a theatrical sensation everyone's going to be talking about. But first, it's time to go over to the culture spot with lovely old Jeremy Donaldson, who's joined by a very special guest. Jeremy. Thanks, Megan. I have the honor and privilege of being joined by hip hop royalty. He's been called the son of the streets and the father of truth. Um, not sure how that works, but whatever. Let's welcome Jesus. Uh, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, it's a real honour to be here on your show, The News. You know, as a kid on the streets, I used to watch you for a window of the shop, so to be here right now is crazy. 
Mm -hmm. um, you've had quite the journey to be here today. Can you tell us about it? Well, you know, I try not to... Um, well, you know, the past is the past, and I don't like to dwell on it. I understand. You but, to... yeah, man, the streets is all I remember. Like, my mother donated me to a charity shop soon after I was born. Oh. Elderly lady took pity on me. You know, she let me sleep on a pile of crime fiction until I taught myself how to walk. Wow, that's uh, quite the childhood. And she died, like, died tragically. Right there in my arms, man. You know, I remember a tear falling as she laid there next to the used homeware. And in that moment, I became a child of the streets. I was just 18 months old. What a tale. What a tale. Mm. You're known for your direct and honest lyrics. Was your style informed by your troubled past? Well, like I said, I, uh, I try not to talk about it. It's just... Um, it's just too hard. Of course, I... But my first album is about the story of the first four times I stole, so I wouldn't starve. A small group of infants came to see me as their de facto leader. They call me Mr. Cheese Slice. Anyway, we were like a family. <laughs> so it would seem. Recently, you've been quite outspoken about the government. What the government? <laughs> advance. Peter Clement. What is it that you object to so vehemently? Well, you know, they stole from us. They're taking our money and spending it, man. Redistributing it? Actually, homelessness has been all but eliminated in the last couple of months. So? Surely that's a cause close to your heart? <clears throat> yeah. Nah, of course, man. Very much so. I just mean, like, like, why do I have to pay for it, you know? You don't. People right. have been rehoused on property seized from the historically wealthy. Mm. And that couldn't have been you, could it? Look, yeah. I worked hard to be here. I built this from nothing, and I deserve to be rewarded for that. Would you say you worked harder than, say, a farmer or a care worker? I don't know. But if people are taking something from my music, choose to value it, buy it, who's to say I don't? And no one can take that away from me. Not even to help, say, vulnerable children? Mr. Cheese Slice? <laughs> what is it you're trying to say? I just don't understand where you've placed yourself politically. I mean, is it ideological or is it tactical? Well, it's more of a... Or like maybe it... it's hereditary. Stop trying to tie me in knots with your words, Jeremy. I let the music speak for itself. And the people agree with me. Well, that remains to be seen. But you have given me a very easy segue out of a conversation that I promise you was much more painful for me than it was for you. So here he is with his hit song, Mrs. Ludlow's Tears. Oh, no. Um, I'm going to do something a little different. Oh. So this is uh, unapproved, is it? Yeah. You love it. Excellent. Don't worry, we've got a state-of-the-art censorship system. What's the worst that could happen? So here he is with a new song. Aren't we lucky? It's Jesus! First, 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 first. you're going to pay off. Oh, oh, oh. You're gonna pay back. Well, we're all different races from many different places. At any given moment, only one could be the greatest. So you can feel elation from your participation. Still, two leaders in this nation. Now we're getting sanctioned. Talking about expansion. Why does Julie S require a massive mansion? Fuck all your schemes, I don't need your freaky team And I don't need your help to achieve my f***ing dreams So don't make a fuss when you find you're one of us Get yeah, every single one of you's a bit Jesus And you can call me crazy cause no one ever pays me But I won't waste a lifetime being lazy I may be inventive, my taste may be expensive But why would I get out of bed with no Although it's contravention of your obvious intention I like to eat a little of the fruits in my invention You make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same The best of the praise of the crest of the wave Cause we're only equal people when we're Take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens Cause he's fit, shit, he's got a job, he's unfit But it's time to spawn a castle with the mother Four. 
So this is for the smug ones, the push and the shove ones The folks that feel the burden of their f***ing loved ones Ones who had plenty like a m***ing Bentley The ones who now finding that their bank accounts are empty The ones with aspiration, who had to flee a nation The ones who built a business out of dreams of perspiration There's all sorts of people, the good and the evil It only takes a glance to see we're not all equal you make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same And the best of the brains serve the press of the ways Cause we're only equal people when we're f***ing slaves Gonna take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clem's fucking head Cause he's big as shit, he's got a job he's unfit for He's touched all the puzzle with fucking bitch for Get out of your seats, get your asses in the streets Set a fire in the building, let him feel Say you hate to go get us The squill of bed letters And burn them on the powers of these fucking letters Gonna take this fast Gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clem Fucking head Cause he's fake He's got a job he's unfit for It's time to stone the past And rip them up Fucking bitch for Chase that dream You don't need a fucking team And advances little dancers Aren't as harmless as it seems Cause they're stale and corrupt Then you're angry Jay's us there with his new song. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. That, I'm sorry. Um, I might not agree with you, but I'd just like to offer you an apology. I've just been told that there was some kind of issue upstairs and an attempt was made to censor some of your lyrics. What? Are you joking? I'd just like to say to you and everyone at home that this was a mistake. <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe this. Here at the National Nightly News, we pride ourselves on remaining neutral, unbiased and independent of any outside interference. You have my word. We will never censor ideas. Back to you, Megan. <laughs> Well, a bit of dangerous language there, sorry about that. <laughs> well, thank you to little Jeremy Donaldson for providing our culture spot. Coming up, we'll be speaking to a couple of familiar faces about their upcoming dramatic outing. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Tired of dull and lifeless hair? Fed up of dry and brittle split ends? Say hello to Acid Gastrique. Acid Gastrique. Provitamin formula is a deep fortifying, intensive treatment that repairs and protects hair from irresistible shine. Shine. Only Acid Gastrique contains an organic blend of ingredients that penetrate deep into your hair, breaking down citrulline and glycogen for hair that looks and feels healthier. Acid. Acid Gastrique nourishes from root to tip for eight times the strength of other brands. Six out of ten shampoo is recommended. Acid Gastrique. The intensive formula acts fast, repairing damage and strengthening strands for hair that's truly unbreakable. Metaphor for hair strength. Rapid repair and protect. Deep nourishing, intensely strengthening Pro V formula. The irresistible, healthy looking great hair days that make you say, Look at my hair. Look at my hair. Acid gastrique. Because you have to. Welcome back, and no, you're not mistaken, sitting across from us are some very familiar faces. <laughs> you really are too kind, Megan. It was only a yoghurt commercial, but I'm still proud of it. <laughs> Here to talk about his new show, we're joined by national treasure Tommy Harris, the national theatre's Philippa Rayne, and national deficit Jeff Algebra. It's so lovely to have you all. Um, Tommy, would you like to tell us about the show? You know what? I'd bloody love to. It's about me. It's about my life. And where did the idea come from? So, right, picture this. Um, their legs are kimbo, mid-session, sweat is pouring out of me like an immense hog. And then Cindy comes in, she says, she says, Pete's on the phone. That's Peter Clement, the Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, Pete's actually a really good mate of mine. Oh, is he really? Yeah, yeah, no, he comes to the training sometimes. He's actually a pretty good goal sweeper. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Pete, he says, he says, Toby, can you... He thinks my name's Toby, see? He says, 
How would you like to spread your message of team spirit and cooperation across this fractured nation? How would you like to really make a difference in these desperate times? What did you say? Yeah, right, yeah. So, Jeff, the question on everyone's lips is, what in God's name are you doing here? Ah, well, after the success of my debut work uh, and all the people that I've touched, I knew that I had a, a career in theatre. Yeah? I've always been an admirer of Tommy from afar. So when my manager phoned and said that I'd been offered the gig as director, I was ecstatic. I whipped my trousers off and got straight to work. Why did you do that? I, I do all my best work with my trousers off. Yeah, I've been told that too. No, no, I wouldn't say so. Right, Tommy, um, sorry, would you just give us a sense of what the show is actually about? Uh, it's about how hard it's been for me and some of the struggles that I've faced. It, it's like really getting to the heart of how tough it is to be me. I call it Tommy Harris, Jesus, that was hard. Mm. Catchy. Uh, we actually have some clips of the process of the show. Um, would you mind telling us what's going on here? Yeah, so the show is, is, is built around uh, two things that are very important to me. Uh, it mixes scenes from my life uh, as well as epic fantasy retellings of scenes from my life. But Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. I'm sorry, son. You're an embarrassment. But, Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. Back, demon! Back to the hells! Yeah. Wow. Philippa, um, what's it been like <laughs> co-starring with Tommy Harris? I've always dreamed of treading the boards at medium-scale regional theatres, Megan. <laughs> and for once, this show really gives me something to sink my teeth into. What's different about this show, then? Tommy, uh... And Mr. Harris's show really lets me show my tremendous range as an actor. I've always <laughs> suffered from typecasting, forced to play the same tired characters in every god-awful yoghurt advert or god-forsaken soap opera or, god forbid, a pantomime. But, you know, this, this, this show has really let me just, just go there. Jeff, the viewers at home will be dying to know exactly what is it that you bring to the show? Good question. Uh, I think these guys would agree with me when I say that it's my, uh, my steady hand on the tiller, my arm round the shoulder approach that's really brought the production from strength to strength. Absolutely right. Jeff's contributions are immeasurable. He was our rock. Yes. Can you give us a sneak peek of anything else that might be in the show? <laughs> Yeah, all sorts, yeah. Uh, we've, yeah. We've got lots of exclusive first-hand experiences of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. And some epic fantasy retellings of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. You'll never take the sacred pass! And... Am I right in saying this was officially commissioned by the government? Yeah, yeah, all, all paid for by the taxpayer, which, you know, to be honest, was actually a lifesaver, really. Yeah, I think it's fair yeah. to say that without Advance's support, we'd have had to cut the finale. Yeah. Which, frankly, would have been a travesty. <laughs> oh, God, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Goodness, and you do this every night? Absolutely. It's a metaphor. For what? Death. And the public are footing the bill, are they? <laughs> Too bloody right they are. Between the cost of my tour bus and the dry cleaning of my ties, I'm barely scraping a profit here. Amazing. And where can the folks at home come and see this for themselves? We're performing all over the nation. <laughs> And people can see it for absolutely free, all courtesy of Advance. Isn't that incredible, Jeremy? Yes. <laughs> It's unbelievable, Megan. Well, thank you all so much for coming. Next time we see you, no doubt, you'll have taken our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all we have time for tonight. Join us tomorrow when I'll be interviewing the world's most attractive horse. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolf. And from all of us here, have a peaceful night. <laughs>
Geometry around. Dad, in non-Euclidean geometry, which type of surface has constant negative gouging temperature? It's Crazy Neil's Crazy Pre-Christmas Extra Exciting Festive Yuletide Easter Extravaganza! This is another chapter from Crazy Neil's Wit and Wisdom, and I'm reaching out through the lens of this camera to say, buddy, if you're listening, build a better life for yourself. You want crazy? We got crazy! Crazy deals! People ask how I got started in business, and I gotta say, hats. I used to own an entire range of butt lift clinics. Didn't work out so well because we gave ladies more of a hunched look and that wasn't popular. I used to have a ventriloquist act. I cheated rather because I trained a dog to talk. You can get down on all fours and yap like a dog for only $22.99 a month. This is a deal with Neil Appeal. As the astronaut once said to me, I had a mission. <laughs> Sometimes you're the alien, and sometimes you're the cow. Hey dude, get off my wife! They wanted to increase recruitment for nuns. Nuns with buns, nuns with guns, nuns with sons. That one didn't go down so much, because apparently they're not supposed to have sons. Crazy Bob here to make your life a little more enjoyable. Namaste!